right, we continue to uh, focus then uh, this afternoon on World uh, Literacy Day. For more, uh, we're now joined uh, uh, on Literacy Day, uh, pardon me, we're joined by Dr. Andile Dube, who's Education Specialist at uh, UNICEF uh, South Africa. Very good afternoon to you, Dr. Dube, and uh, thank you for joining us here on uh, SABC News. Good afternoon to all the viewers and good afternoon. Just as a start, what is the organization today doing to observe uh, uh, Literacy Day and really the importance of observing uh, uh, the day? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, globally continues to uh, celebrate the day. We have different programs that we do to, to just make sure that everyone um, is reminded of the significance of the day. Uh, like all other UN agencies and partners in South Africa, we join in celebrating the cognizance of the literacy and the value it brings to education. We're very clear of the, the need for lit literacy. We're very clear of how literacy actually contributes to all learning that happens. We're very um, uh, committed to ensuring that quality of education for many young people in South Africa is strengthened. But we know that without literacy, that is not going to, to happen. For us, the cognizance of the day stems from the evidence that shows that, I mean, imagine if you are trying to read Mandarin and you do not understand Mandarin, even the simplest of instructions will not make sense. And so literacy means that for many young people in South Africa. Um, as we then go on and think about what the future of education and quality education in South Africa is about, we are very uh, committed to programs that strengthen the foundations of literacy in South Africa. Yeah. Well, what strides um, have indeed been made uh, thus far with regards to, to literacy? And maybe we should talk about the, the, the targets that uh, have been set. I mean, it's all good and well. Uh, for us to observe the day, but uh, you know the, 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 what, what actually then has been done, and, and I'm going to say particularly for you know uh, I'd say children in disadvantaged areas who'd get the most out of having a a, a, a reading culture entrenched, you know. So many children in um, uh, disadvantaged, disadvantaged communities in South Africa, particularly 75% of the system, um, continue to have limitations in accessing um, reading resources, in accessing reading programs, in accessing um, programs that support their reading and, and learning. Um, we, as a UNICEF, we align mainly with uh, the national programs, particularly the NTP, the Department of Basic Education Action Plan, around just trying to reach as many young people as possible. So for UNICEF, we are uh, very committed to the 75% of the system that is likely to be left behind. We're committed to the young people in uh, children in rural areas and in informal settlements, in townships, and in communities and homes that do not have people who actually encourage their literacy. So that becomes almost 30, 30 million young people or 30 million children in the system. But if you think about the 75%, we are looking at at least 7 million young people who have to have access to quality learning and thus quality literacy. Mm. One of the hindrances has uh, indeed been uh, COVID-19. And I want to talk about how uh, COVID-19 has uh, affected learning, especially uh, for children and uh, youth. I'm sure it's caused uh, kind of a setback in terms of you achieving those uh, goals that might have perhaps uh, uh, been set. But uh, of course, some people have then taken advantage of uh, the fact that we've had things like uh, uh, lockdown and use that time to, to further studies or read more, and etc. Yes, I, I think uh, COVID-19 has done two things. Firstly, it has uh, widened the gap for kids who are from poverty-stricken backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, it has widened the gap for children who are from schools that were unable for the past five months to continue with education or to continue going to schools or continue to access their learning through television, through radio and through online platforms. It has also reminded us as South Africans of the inequities in the, in, in the country and how they have not will continue to be uh, marginalized if uh, we do not move with speed and by moving with speed i mean all sectors in the system um there's evidence that uh, just surfaces uh, from all the from the world bank world bank and other un agencies that shows that has actually shown how much in time the young people the children from the disadvantaged 
that state communities are losing. But it also has shown what this means for their life, lifetime. So the amount of money that they are likely to, to, to lose as they go into adults. And actually, just by showing that now, we are thinking about what are the long-term effects of, of that. Yeah. So if we are going to take that evidence, we, it, 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 it's, it's just an opportunity to think about what other ways are we able to bridge those gaps for, for the kids, for the children. So for, for an example, there is, as we are dealing with COVID-19, we've tried to have programs on television, we've tried to have programs on radio, on online platforms, but it, the reality remains the same. The young people from those communities are going to experience these uh, gaps for a very long time. Um, and so we're currently thinking about, um, and in, in, in working with uh, government and other players, thinking about how do we ensure that we bring in interventions that uh, bridge the gap. So for those young kids, it is not just about now the emergency of COVID-19, but it is uh, the recovery period and beyond. But also it means we have to think about how are we going to ensure that the gap that is, has create, been created by the five months loss in time and loss in learning is actually covered. So for foundation phase also, it's quite difficult because for them to access most of the learning, they have to have someone who actually help them with the learning, whether it is a teacher or if it is with the parents. Yeah. Um, yeah. As a UNICEF, what we've also tried is as much as possible not to think about just the kids, but we think about the parents who are supposed to assist the kids in order to access the literacy, in order to assess the reading and to assess the reading material. All right, uh, Dr. Angela Dube, thank you very much uh, for giving us uh, your time this afternoon on uh, SA Today. We really do uh, appreciate uh, your input indeed. All right, that's